Essentially, spiritual process means all-inclusiveness. If you cannot embrace everything the way it is, if you have to accept some and reject some, then there will be no spiritual process. You will only have morality, no spirituality. This reminds me of a fantastic story, a situation rather, which happened in Bahubali's life. Myself and Bahubali for a few years had a great affair <laughs> There's a place called Gumatigiri, which is uh, a little over twenty-five kilometers from Mysore city. There is an eighteen-foot tall statue of Gummata standing naked on top of a rock, I think it's eleven hundred-year-old statue, which was lost with overgrowth of forest and uh, only about probably somewhere in late sixties, it was rediscovered. The man who rediscovered it, a simple stone cutter, an illiterate person, went there to take a stone which was appropriate for making whatever forms that he was making it of, usually some deity. And he discovered this statue which is on top of a, a small hill or a bunch of rocks which are around hundred and twenty feet tall and on top of it an eighteen-foot statue of Bahubali. I met this old man. He was in his seventies, still cutting stone and doing physical work. And uh, when I spoke to him, a completely unschooled, illiterate person, <laughs> he was such an amazing guy. Just having found this Gomateshwara, his whole life was transformed. He became a great devotee. A simple stone cutter turned into a fantastic devotee and I met him probably eighty-three or eighty-four when I was there. And I conducted a few programs and spent a certain amount of time in Gomatagiri. There are any number of things I can say about this place because uh, so many things happened there. This was a time after 1982, my own experiences had blossomed and... Uh, but I was trying to find articulation to what was happening within me. It was a very crucial time where Gumateshwara came into my life. And uh, as I said, we had a great affair. So there is a wonderful situation in Gomata's life. He and his brother fought many battles together initially. Later on, they fought against each other. After having a bloodbath, after having slaughtered thousands of people, one day Bahubali or Gomata realized what is the point of all this bloodshed and he went and stood in penance, naked, just there. You'll always see the statues of Gomata standing naked with wines going up his legs or his body to show that he stood there for a very long time. And he stood there for over fourteen years. Everything that he could do with himself in terms of purifying himself, he had done, but still he could not attain. Uh, when a yogi came by, a sage of great attainment came by, 
Gomata looked at him and just one teardrop slipped out of his eyes. This one teardrop was a question mark. What is it? I've done everything that I can do. What is holding me back? That's a question, an unuttered question, just a teardrop to ask this question to the yogi. What is holding me back? I've done everything that I know. Then the yogi said, you have brought a false sense of humility into you. You are a king, but now you're willing to bow down to a beggar on the street. You're willing to bow down to any creature on the planet. You're willing to bow down to an inanimate rock. You have made yourself like this, it's wonderful. But I see you're incapable of bowing down to your brother with whom you have a fight. It is this falseness of humility which is holding you back. This was the moment of attainment for Bahubali. Within himself, he did bow down to his brother and he attained. This is a very beautiful story because this is how human beings are held back. It's not some great things, one little thing that you can't clear from your karmic space, just holds you back. Is this not unfair? How many things I did, one thing holds me back. Right now if your little finger gets stuck to this pillar, I've freed my whole body but my little finger is stuck, can I go somewhere? I cannot go somewhere. That's how it is. <laughs>